There's only one table to eat at. If we're doing any feasting, it'll be at the Lord's table. I want to be over in 1 Thessalonians, the second chapter, uh, 11 and 12. You know, uh, Paul looks exhorting and comforting and uh, the brethren there. He starts in verse 11, and he says, As you know how we have exhorted and comforted and charged you, every one as a father does to his children, that you should walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. Now, I want to look about it. That little bit. Amen. Now, God has called us. Now, now, early in the letter, Paul refers to these same brethren here as saints of God. So, you know, not only God has called us to a appointed place and time to his kingdom and glory, but he's done so as saints of God. We've been called into this place as saints. You see, you know, now, uh, in Acts 11, the disciples were first called Christians during Antioch. But see, God calls them saints. See. And uh, you look up the word, Strong's Greek word, G40, it, it, the, uh, the, the word there is hagios, was holy. So God has made us holy, calls us saints. They translate that word saints, that's fine with me. But it's holy, you see, holy. It don't surprise us, you know. God only deals in the holy. And he's, because, you know, those joined to the Lord are made holy. You're holy. And uh, we're supposed to reason this way, right? Uh, be ye holy for I am holy. This makes sense to me. Certainly God, we don't expect God, you know, to have anything to do with something that's unclean. It, it's got to be holy first. You see, sanctified actually and made holy. And then we're joined to the Lord, you see. This is how Paul says, he tells Corinth church, unto the church of God, which is that Corinth to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, and with that in every place called upon the name of the Lord, our Lord Jesus both theirs and ours. So what Paul is saying there, he, well, he actually talks to the household of God, and uh, he, he's together with those, you see, all those who call on the name of the Lord. So we've been, we've been as a household of God, together, you see, together we're in this, we're in this place. So what's our present and current situation then? Current, uh, Corinthians 6, 11, but ye are washed and ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of God. See, that's where we're standing right now. That's our current situation. When you think about being in the kingdom and glory, you ask, how did we arrive there in his kingdom and glory? Well, you know, Paul said we were delivered into it. You see, he said that uh, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated unto his kingdom of his dear son. We just didn't decide, you know, just one day I'm going to enter the kingdom of God. We, we may have thought so that we was our decision, but actually, you see, uh, God said, I, I delivered you. you uh, that means, you know, being delivered, that means somebody else had to do it. Yeah, we, we do escape, but it... It's not because of what we've done. We didn't do any escaping. We were delivered. The kingdom of God is a safe place, you see. That's where we're, Satan can't get into the kingdom of God, brethren. That's a safe place for us. Uh, and all he can do, actually, you know, all he can do is he can call from the outside, you know, and he, he, can, he can attempt us to come out of the kingdom of God. Then he's got you, but he can't come in there after you. Paul sets... Uh, straight on this. You know, Paul told Timothy, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his purpose and grace, which was given in Christ Jesus before the world began. That's a lot there. A holy calling. You know, later uh, other place Paul referred to as a heavenly calling. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. So how should you think about the kingdom and his, his kingdom and glory? You know, uh, as holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Amen. Now, the exhortation then is to consider Jesus Christ, the apostle and high priest of our profession. So, uh, you know, we don't have to uh, debate about this among brethren, but, you know, the calling of God is certainly an effectual calling, Amen. you see. Uh, this calling enables us. It actually enables us to be workers together with him He's in this kingdom and glory. Uh, God could tell Paul, you see, because he's made us capable, Paul could, could t uh, God could tell Paul, Paul, my grace is, is sufficient for thee. Yeah. And we've been brought into the same grace, you see. Right. Take notice, the kingdom is where the grace of God is abundant. Amen. You live outside the kingdom, 
you live outside the kingdom of God, and you're going to default. You're going to naturally default some kind of religious system. You see, if you get outside the kingdom of God, we talk about this all the time. Wherefore we haven't received a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Now, it's unto his kingdom and glory. Okay, this is not his glorious kingdom like you might read in some other translations. There's really a, tr a conjunction there. There's really an and. It's his kingdom and his glory, you see. And so we'll be clear about that. God's kingdom is a glorious one, that's for sure. But it's not the point here. Jesus told his disciples, you remember, Fear not, little flock, for it's your, God, for it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The fact of the matter is we've inherited a kingdom, Amen. something an a, a, a actual place and time. God has brought us into the kingdom of his son. You know, it's like being in the fold, in the, in the, in the sheep fold of the good shepherd. Now listen to Jesus' response to the religious leaders in Luke 17. And when he was demanded or asked of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, you see. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo over there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. That's what Jesus says. And then Paul comes right in behind this later in Romans, and he elaborates. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now Jesus is telling religious leaders, we tell them today, don't be looking for a kingdom, a kingdom of God like you see on this earth. The kingdom of God is not about this at all. It's not a physical thing. It's a, it's a spiritual right. kingdom of heaven. Uh, at this time, we had the kingdom by faith. We really do. If you've got a strong faith, you've got a strong grasp on the kingdom of God. That's what, that's what this amounts to. That means you have, a, you have an awareness of the kingdom of God. You've got a strong faith. You see, weak faith or, or young faith, so to speak, you, 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 you kind of, you see, but you're growing into this. It's a day coming, though, brethren, when we will, we will fully possess the kingdom of God. We will actually reign with Christ in his kingdom. Jesus said himself, The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that defile and offend or, and, and do uh, in, iniquity. And then shall the righteous shine forth as a son in the kingdom of the Father. Who has ears, let him hear. Now, that's one thing I can hear. Amen. I can hear this every day. We shall shine as the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Today, right now, we shine as lamps. Okay? But in, in, a, in, the, in the glory to come, brother, you'll shine like the sun. You'll have the brightness of the sun. This is something to think about. We're moving. Every day, we're moving toward this everlasting kingdom. You know, uh, we've been put into the kingdom even now. But our departure, when our departure comes, we want to be able to transfer from this kingdom into the eternal kingdom. Yes. Amen. Jesus said, the kingdom is within you. And we continue to seek after this kingdom. This never stops. We're in pursuit of this kingdom. It consists of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And we go in that direction because we know these things. Uh, but you know, now in this verse, it talks about we, we, we're in his kingdom. But that's not the end of it. That's a, that's a big consideration. But he says his glory also. Let's talk about that just a second. In his glory... And this is a place that the saints of God are being transformed. This is what I want to touch on this morning. It's a work of grace. This is a work of grace. It takes place in the kingdom of God. Paul said, we all are, but we all, with open face, beholding as it is, the glory of the Lord are changed to the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. That's what's taking place. Faith has lifted the veil. Brethren, that once kept us blind and in darkness. Amen. And now we can gaze, actually look upon the glory Amen. of the Lord. And, and would you be changed in this way? <clears throat> you, can actually take, you can actually observe this. You receive faith. Come into the kingdom and you can watch the saints. You can observe the saints being changed from one glory to the other. We, can know this, we know this can happen. We know this is happening. This is a preeminent work of the Holy Spirit to make Jesus Christ known. We've been put in the kingdom, and this is where uh, Christ has expounded and opened up to us. Even David has some idea about this. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. 
The glory of God in Christ Jesus is being proclaimed to the people of God. Just as it was declared, you know, it occurred to me, just as it was declared to Moses on the mount, you remember, the glory of God was proclaimed to him. But in the, the difference in our day is this glory, this change that takes place is not a temporary one like in Moses, but it's a permanent one. It changes yes. us yes. permanently. Our glory will not fade away. Everything that we see of God now, everything we see of God, Christ Jesus now, we will take with us in the, in the world to come. Now, you already know that the kingdom of God is an eternal one. That's the way uh, Peter referred to it. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. There's it's coming a time, and I feel like it's a soon, a soon coming, actually, when the work will be complete and will be glorified. Paul talks about this. This is his hope. Romans 8, 17, if children, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified with him. This is the last change to take place. This is what we're, this is what we're waiting on. This, this change that takes place before we enter into eternal glory. Need a new body before we can go in. We've got to be fit, fitted with a new body before we can come into God's glory. Paul said we're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye in a moment at the last trump. It's going to be God. Who's, it's going to be the Lord who performs this work. Mm -hmm. We're going to do this together, brethren, you see. Yeah. And together, together, we'll all be, we'll be, all of us will be with the Lord forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned unto like his glorious body mm -hmm. according to the working thereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. This is our hope, the salvation that is coming to us. Amen. You know, if we can keep these kinds of things in the forefront of our mind that we've been, we've been put into his kingdom and his glory, that's going to give us an advantage in these latter days. We're going to be able to overcome everything that's around us. We can actually be better shaped to say no. We're going to be in better shape to overcome. So in consideration of his of his kingdom and his glory, uh, I'd, I'd like to exhort and encourage. Uh, let's just stay focused on his kingdom and his glory then. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things to think about, and most of them are, not, um, are, most, most of them are unprofitable, actually. But you can, if you can focus on the kingdom and his glory, make that a, uh, an objective throughout the day, you, that's going to that's gonna be profitable to you. Uh, because you already know, <laughs> you already know this is where the benefit is, and this is where the profit is. Thank you on these things. Thank you, brethren. Amen.